Our biggest responsibility as system administrators is managing devices and the technologies that live on those devices. Servers get all the glory, and that's really where most of our responsibility lies, making sure a server has purpose and that it fulfills that purpose day in and day out. But there's other physical devices that an organization may need us to support, like workstations, printers, and scanners, just to name a few. In this nugget, we're going to focus in on the server and look at the many different kinds of roles a server can play, and I'll even show you a real live network with a handful of servers. If you think about it, sysadmins are really just glorified babysitters for all of the servers living within our closets, offices, and data centers within an organization. Look at this beautiful picture of a server room. Probably one of the nicest ones you'll ever see because most closets or rooms look more like this. Hopefully, that's not what you encounter on your first day on the job. So look at all the servers we have in this room. We have rack servers, tower servers, blade servers, all just different kinds of enclosures for housing our servers that provide power, cooling, and a much more efficient usage of space. And we can remotely manage and configure all of these puppies from a centralized console. Now, the definition of a server and the purpose of a server is to provide network services to our users, to software and applications, and to other servers within our environment. Now, a server doesn't actually do anything or have any purpose in life until we put something on it in the form of software or a feature that's built into the operating system. Once we do get something on it, it is that server's job to provide that service, and it's our job to ensure that server continues to provide that service. Now, oftentimes, you'll see a server dedicated to a single role. Other times, you'll see a server that contains multiple roles and is a multifaceted, multi-purpose server. Now, there are a lot of different types of server roles out there. Let's go over some of the most common ones you'll find in almost every environment. Starting at the top here, easily the most popular type of server that you'll find in every environment, and oftentimes multiples in every environment, is the file server, which as you may have guessed, is used to store content for everybody. Users store their files, developers store their applications and websites, and we store things like utilities and tools and backups. And by the way, another big responsibility of a sysadmin is managing the storage devices that live underneath our file servers, what's known as the storage subsystem. And we actually have a nugget coming up in this course on storage, so we'll look more closely at all the different kinds of storage devices around. Another popular server type that you'll see in many organizations today are web servers, which again are used to host and expose websites externally to the internet and internally to our users on the intranet. Another popular type of server is the database server, which is primarily used by websites and applications to read and write data into a structured database, which is a little bit different than our file servers, which store unstructured data. Application servers are used to host the middle tier components of an application. So you've got your front end of your application, which is a website or the application running on your desktop. And then you've got the server side components, which is really just the code living on the server. And then you've got the back end, which is the database. So this is really the middle tier. Users enter data into the front end. It flows through that middle tier and lands in the database. Print server is another really popular one that is used to expose printers to the network. So everyone can use them. And it also gives us the ability to centrally manage the printers, the drivers associated with them, and the print jobs that are running on them. And by the way, printers are another hardware device that sysadmins are highly responsible for. Mail servers, as you may have guessed, are used to store, process, and deliver emails. And finally here, virtualization servers, which are extremely popular these days, are used to cut down on the amount of hardware we have in our data centers. We can have one server host many servers and operating systems. And we'll dig a little deeper into this as well as we have a nugget in this course dedicated to virtualization. Now, let me give you a quick peek at what these servers look like. I actually built a small network here that contains a file server, a web server, and a virtualization server. Now, I built this using our virtual lab environment here at CBT Nuggets, which we provide with many of our courses for hands-on experience without you needing to buy and build your own lab environment. And here we are on a Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition machine. And if we look at this network here, we've got HVNUG, which is Hyper-VNUG. That's a Microsoft's virtualization platform. We also have WebNUG here. This is an actual web server. FSNUG, which is our file server. And we have another one down here called DCNUG, which is a domain controller that ties all of this together. So if we head back to HVNUG here, I've got Server Manager, which is a great tool for remotely managing all of these machines 
in one go. And if we look at our local server, we can see the computer name here, we can see its IP address, we can see its, how many processors it has, how much memory it has, all this good stuff. But if we head down here to all servers, we can actually see all of these machines in here. And by choosing one, I can actually take a look at the logs and the events over on those machines. Pretty cool, huh? And if we head down here to say IIS, we can actually see all the machines in our environment that contain this role. And WebNug here is the only one. And IIS stands for Internet Information Services. It is Microsoft's web server platform. And we can actually browse over to the default website hosted on that machine. If I open up Internet Explorer here and browse over to HTTP web dash nug, look at that. It just served up that web page from that machine. If we choose Hyper-V right above it here, we can see this local machine here is the only one that contains that role. And if we head up here to File and Storage Services and head up to Shares, we can see the shares exposed here on our file server. I have a backup share over there. I can right-click on this and choose to open share. And we browse through the network into that machine, into that share, where I have a bunch of directories here for storing backups. So there's a small taste of a network containing servers and their associated roles. Now you can see why servers get all the glory. They deserve it. They're the machines that power our infrastructure, which is why they're our primary responsibility. And the technologies we place on those machines define the role of that machine and the services they provide to our users and customers. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.